So there was this kid at school named Felix, and Felix would constantly claim that he was a black belt in karate and can beat everybody up. Like, randomly, alright? Like, you're just sitting there, you know, talking about the way, I don't know, the Chicago Bears won the game last night, and he would just walk up to you and go, just so you know, I'm a black belt and I can beat you up. Which is a really weird thing to say out of nowhere, alright? Like, you're like, oh, hey, Felix, how you're doing? Um, I am a karate professional, and I 100% could absolutely beat you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, it's just the a weird thing to say and basically <laughs> he was kind of known for just being the kid that would constantly talk about how he could beat everybody in a fight and like would be talking to you randomly in you know Spanish class asking for help with the homework and then talk about how he actually you know could be a professional MMA fighter and could fight absolutely anyone in the class he was just one of these kids that was constantly talking about his ability to destroy anybody in a fight and how basically he was an alpha male that was the way God intended humans to be like the way that this kid was designed was exactly what humans were supposed to look like which I mean if you were a 6'6 chiseled Olympian I can kind of understand your theology there I can understand why you feel like you're definitely the world's greatest physical specimen but the only problem with Felix constantly flexing that he was better than everybody and could beat everybody up and was just in better shape is that uh he he just wasn't you see, Felix just happened to look like he fought, a, I don't know, a box of donuts and lost, alright? Like, this guy was a little bit of a chunky monkey. If this guy was doing karate, it would be considered, you know, Kung Fu Panda. That's how much fat this man was packing. And Felix was just constantly talking about how he was the best physical specimen, the idea of beauty, which he just wasn't, alright? Like, I understand self-confidence and all that, but, you know, people on my 600-pound life shouldn't be bragging about the fact that they're definitely karate geniuses, because it's just not true. Like, Deborah you weigh 600 pounds if you try to do any more karate you're going to fall through the floor it's not healthy stop pretending that you're actually the reincarnation of bruce lee it's just not true but that's what Felix was known for. He would constantly talk about how, you know, oh, I could beat anybody up. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm an alpha male specimen capable of the most f extreme physical things in the universe, which was pretty cringe. And the worst part is you couldn't pick on him, all right? Like, you couldn't really fight back because whenever he would get bullied or picked on at all, he would immediately just start crying and go to the principal or, like, tell a teacher immediately. So here's this fat kid that is constantly talking about how he's super BA and can beat anybody up, but the second anybody makes a joke about him or tries to square up, he just runs away crying to the principal's office. So yeah, he was not exactly the most popular kid. Most people found him pretty annoying because, you know, someone constantly getting up in your face and saying that they're gonna beat you up when they look the way that beef smells just generally isn't a good way to make friends. So regardless, one day they're sitting in biology class and they're talking about, you know, the way human genes work, which I mean, it's cool, I guess. Everybody wants to know, like, oh, my eye color comes from my father's side and he's blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't know, all right? Biology. Bi ah, biology. Science. That's my scary science noise. Not that science should be scary. So whatever. Uh, they're sitting there. And of course, Felix starts going on this rant about how he's the greatest physical specimen to ever exist. He is literally the way that humans were meant to be designed for. He's strong and he can beat anybody up and he's a black belt in karate. And the only problem with constantly lying about being a black belt in karate when you look the way of like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters is that people that are actually black belts kind of know that you're full of it, right? So there's a guy who's actually a black belt in the back of the class that is just tired of hearing this guy talk about how he's the world's greatest physical specimen and how basically everybody and their mom is inferior to this guy's genetics. So he says, yeah, you know, made a joke about physical specimen drinking two liter bottles of Mountain Dew every day. Because an important thing to remember about Felix and another reason why people just assumed that he was in fact not a super athlete hell-bent on destroying everything in its path, alright? He was not Bruce Lee. Is that Felix would no joke come to school with you know a, a water bottle right everybody comes to school with a water bottle but the only difference is his water bottle was a two liter of Mountain Dew code red like filled with Mountain Dew code red he would drink a two liter bottle of Mountain Dew code red every single day at school so the black belt kid makes a joke about how you know drinking two liters of Mountain Dew every day does not make you a peak physical specimen in fact I'm pretty sure that's actually pretty bad for you which is pretty funny, like, it's a pretty harmless joke, alright? You're constantly bragging about how you're the way that God intended humans to look when you're drinking a two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew every day and have, you know, a gut the size of Nantucket. Like, it, it, it's just, it's just a funny joke, alright? And not to mention, when you're constantly bragging attention to yourself and talking about how you're gonna beat everybody up, you kind of get made fun of. Like, that's just what comes with the territory, alright? If tomorrow I bought a tap-out shirt, started breaking monster energy cans open on my forehead and screaming about how everybody's a beta male compared to me, I kind of deserve to get clowned on it any chance you get.
Regardless, it should have just been a harmless joke. Like, no harm, no foul. Yeah, everybody laughed a little bit, but you just let it go and move on with your day. But no. Apparently, Felix, you know, had the equivalent in his head that insulting his Mountain Dew habits was basically the same thing as saying that his grandma was a dirty pig half buried in mud and feces. Because he gets up, walks over to the kid that's a black belt, gets up in his face, and just starts screaming. And, and, and amongst his screams, says something along the lines of, and you can't make this up, folks, because it's just... Is so ridiculous. You can say a lot of things about me, but if you ever talk about my Mountain Dew, I will smite you. Like, yeah, out of out of everything someone could insult, bro. Like, you know what? My mom is fair game. You can call my mom a two-bit floozy that definitely doesn't know who my father is. That's totally cool. But the second you insult my Mountain Dew, how dare you? Mountain Dew is not a drink. It is a lifestyle, okay? I can't believe that anybody would insult the thing nearest and dearest to me, which is the lifestyle of Mountain Dew. Just gets weirdly, weirdly upset said about the fact that they're making fun of him drinking Mountain Dew, which is bizarre, right? Like, imagine somebody calling you a subpar physical specimen that is chubby, and you only get mad about your soda choices being called into question, bruh. You might have called my mom a rusty fish hook attached to a droopy dead marlin, but don't you dare talk about my Pepsi habits. Like, it's just a really weird thing to get extremely upset about. Like, why would you get upset about your soda drinking habits when somebody just said that you're a subpar physical specimen? Like, they just said that you are a dead degradation to the human species and you're only mad about the fact that they called your Mountain Dew code red gross? So at this point, there is a scene. They're obviously up in each other's faces, screaming at each other about each other's soda choices, you know? Just the, the, the ultimate insult, which is, I don't like the way that you drink your soda. Yeah, once you say that, it goes too far, apparently. I don't know what's going on at this school, all right? I would much rather have somebody make fun of my favorite soda than make fun of, like, my mom or my brother. But I guess in certain places, hey, certain things are just too far, bro. So the teacher calms down the situation, and that basically makes Felix think that he won, though. Like, he got up in this black belt's face, and the black belt didn't fight him, mainly because the teacher was like, Hey, guys, keep a friendly reminder that if you get in a fight, you're going to get in a ton of trouble. But in Felix's mind, that means that he won, right? Like, he's like, oh, yeah, I won the battle. Anyone who insults my soda choices gets immediately roasted by me, the god, Felix, the ultimate roasting god, all right? People might try to 1v1 me in a rap battle, but the truth is that I, as Felix, the black belt that I am, will single-handedly destroy the army of Genghis Khan. Like, just got this massive ego because the teacher broke up the argument. So he starts, like, bullying his classmates with this two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew in his hand, right? Like, he's basically picking on them, doing everything he can to make them miserable, and basically, Felix had a mom that was a bit of a care and it would cause problems, so nobody really messed with him. But, like, at one point, you know, he starts hitting kids with this two-liter bottle in the PE locker room just very not dope things you know Imagine going to school, feeling like you're gonna be safe, bro. You're just chilling in gym class, getting ready to run a mile or something, and then this fat kid walks up and just starts swinging a two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew Code Red at you. Like, what are you even supposed to do to that, man? School's supposed to be a safe place, and this guy's walking around like a, a an, an obese, diabetic knight, except instead of a mace, he has a two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew. Rip little Jimmy, you know? He could have withstood a hit from a one-liter, but the two-liter was too much. Rest in peace. Like, I, I don't even know what to say, man. If I was at school and somebody started trying to swing on me with a two liter a bottle of Mountain Dew, I would be so confused, so perplexed. This is not what I signed up for when I joined the eighth grade, okay? So basically, Felix goes on this, you know, bullying tear for like two weeks, making everybody miserable with this two liter bottle, right? And over this time, because nobody's really fighting back to him because the teachers had a soft spot for him, he gets cockier and cockier. And so one day, you know the black belt kid that had called him a subpar physical specimen? Yeah, Felix decides that it's time to punk him again, except this time in the lunchroom and he basically is gonna make the kid give him his pudding which apparently you know is like crack cocaine in this school okay the person who sent me this story spent like an entire paragraph telling me about how important pudding it as pudding is at his school like oh you know Ryan, the, the pudding mafia, dude, they control the pudding supply. I'm not even kidding. Pudding is basically gold in my school. You know, like, you guys might need to work on that because pudding is, it's good. But I don't think it's, like, the world's greatest dessert food, okay? Like, nobody is ever extremely hyped that there's pudding on the menu at a restaurant, you know? I, I'll get hyped about gelato, but I'm not going to get hyped about pudding. But that's enough about dessert foods. Let's get back to the story. That's my bad. I got distracted. So, basically, Felix walks up to this kid in the lunchroom and starts trying to flex on him. And Black Belt has had a enough at this point.
point, all right? He's smacked kids with his two liter bottle. He's threatened to sit on a couple people, and we all know that would be lethal. Like, he, he's basically just terrorized the school at this point, and Black Belt Kid is having none of it. He's like, you know what? That's enough. I'm over it. I'm done. So, I, I guess they, like, started fighting, and it's at this point that the person who sent me the story actually walked into the lunchroom, and basically sees this commotion, runs over, gets to the front of the pile, and what he sees he described as what would happen if a redneck made a kung fu movie, which is a pretty good way to describe a fight involving a two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew. So I guess that they were fighting, and at one point, <laughs> the, Felix decides that the only way he's gonna win is by throwing the two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew at this kid. So he throws it and uh, obviously does not have a very athletic throw. Felix is not Tom Brady out here dropping dimes to, to wide receivers in the end zone. He doesn't throw it very well, which is obviously like, what did you expect? We all saw that coming, that he wasn't going to be extremely athletic. But I guess the bottle goes flying over the other black belt kid's head, breaks on the wall, and just like gets code red everywhere. So there's a code red explosion, and then they just start fighting each other. But the only problem is Felix very obviously isn't a black belt. It's, it's, it's fair to everyone at this point because he's basically just trying to hug this kid and like drop him to the floor with the amount of weight that he has like he's like ah crap I'm not gonna win if we actually fight so he's just hugging this kid and the kid that he's hugging you know trying to fight him is sitting there like dude stop hugging me stop hugging me we're supposed to fight we're supposed to fight and you know Felix is just like we are fighting you're getting destroyed by an A1 black belt just the weirdest fight you've ever seen bro like imagine walking into your lunchroom and there's two kids hugging each other viciously with code red splattered all over the place because one of them decided to throw a two liter bottle at the other one's head. That's what I call a weird Tuesday, okay? Go back to class, kids. Act like nothing happened. Look in teachers. But whatever, the fight progresses, and finally the black belt kid gets the upper hand, picks up Felix, and body slams him, and no joke, cracks a tile underneath where he body slammed the kid, bruh. I'm sorry, but if you drink enough Mountain Dew where you're getting body slammed, cracks a tile, you really need to go on some Weight Watchers Jenny Craig type beat, okay? Like, listen, I know what you guys are thinking. There's probably gonna to be a comment right now. Ryan, you're fat shaming. Nah, bro, if you want to be a little husky, that's all on you. But if you weigh enough to crack a tile when you get body slammed, it's not healthy, all right? My 600 pound life status, and that's not good for anyone at all. Like, nobody wins in that situation. It just doesn't happen. Regardless, I guess after that, you know, the embarrassment of getting body slammed before the teacher breaks it up with the entire school watching, Felix kind of realized that he couldn't bully people anymore, which I mean, hey, I guess is a good life lesson. Like, is, is it better to, you know, learn your lesson by getting body slammed after throwing a bottle of Mountain Dew or just never be a bully in the first place? But regardless, he kind of uh, got that embarrassment that he needed to not be a bad person anymore, which is really half the battle. Like, if you get so embarrassed that you stop being a jerk, it's, it's okay at that point. Like, you might as well forgive yourself. But regardless, guys, moral of the story is maybe don't pretend to be a black belt and try to fight people if you're not a black belt. Like, I don't even understand the thought process there. I'm not a black belt. I've been lying about being a black belt. So I should go fight an actual black belt. What what type of idea is that, bro? Like, what, did you watch a Karate Ken DVD when you were six? Take one lessons of karate, bro, and now you think you're, you're Jason Bourne? Oh my god, it's Jason Bourne. With a two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew strapped to your hip so hard, bro? I don't think so. You're basically the diet bet it kung fu kenny like listen you want to know why i don't go around fighting people because i know i'm not a black belt and i know that if i actually tried to fight a black belt i would get wrecked but that's the difference between me and people i guess these days some people just want to get beat up by black belts like it's on their bucket list get embarrassed and you know get body slammed enough to break a tile after throwing a bottle of mountain dew but hey to each their own i guess Guys, today we're going to be talking about a cringe lord herself. This girl's name for the story, I'm going to call her Abigail because her real name, I don't know. I feel like if I say people's real names, it makes the story a little too mean. Because I say really mean things when I'm telling a story and I don't want anybody to feel bad. Uh, yes, I'm going to <laughs> roast this girl for the next like 10 minutes, but uh, you know, ba bear with me, okay? I'm a nice guy at heart. One time I uh, actually gave a kid in Minecraft three diamonds so he could make a pickaxe. So I'm basically the Pope at this point, but enough with the dilly daddling, enough with the scourgity do. Let's get into the video. So, uh, in high school, there's a group of cringy people. Everybody has, like, three or four cringy groups, and chances are we're all actually a part of a group that makes somebody cringe in some way. This girl was not one of those people. This girl was a social outlier. She didn't really have, like, a group that she belonged to, probably because nobody really liked to hang out with her, if I'm being honest, because she was just the most annoying, unbearable person to ever exist. And I know that sounds harsh, but 
You know, I, I wouldn't say it unless it was true. I'm the type of person when I tell stories about people I fought, I don't really think they're bad guys. So if I'm saying that this girl was cringy and annoying, you know I'm telling you the god to honest truth. This girl was the type of girl that was somehow a blend of the weird horse girl we all know with the Tumblr girl and Pinterest, which just sounds like the most unbearable thing to ever exist, and that's because it was. Like, I followed her on Instagram because she followed me first, and I was trying to keep that ratio golden. You know what I mean? Like, you know somebody follows you, and you don't really, you know, you don't really know them that well, so you hit them with the follow back because it's awkward not to, like it's a little rude not to. It was one of those situations, so I hit her with the follow back, just trying to be a nice guy, being, yo, what up, I'm Ryan, we can be homies. And immediately she starts posting quotes, inspirational quotes over the back of the Eiffel Tower, but they're not like good inspirational quotes. It's not, you know, let your success make the noise while you work hard in silence. I, I don't know what a good motivational quote is. It's stuff that's just not true. Like it's like, people will never understand your dreams and passions. And if no one understands your dreams and passions, maybe you just have a bad dream and passion, like calling it crazy. Or, or quotes like, Success is not the metric for which you should be judged, and uh, I'm sorry, but what else are we supposed to judge you on? If you have all the ideas and they all suck and they never take off, wh what am I supposed to think? Well, <laughs> it's a little unfair to judge you based on your success, you know? You invented the three-legged dog. How many people can say they invented the three-legged dog? Not many. Yeah, because it's a bad invention. It doesn't make sense. But regardless, she would post stuff like this, which was pretty cringy, obviously, but you know, I lived with it. It was pretty entertaining to log into Instagram every day and see something that would make me laugh, make me cringe a little bit, cringe to me is super entertaining. So whatever, I'm watching her post these quotes for a while, and then the singing videos start, and I know what you're thinking. Well, she's posting singing videos on her Instagram. How cringe could it be? But it's not normal singing. She would take pop songs, and you know, instead of just singing it normally, like a Taylor Swift song, I'm gonna use blank space, for example. Instead of saying, hey, I've got a blank space baby, and I will write your name. A normal singing voice. She was super into screamo, and she would do screamo covers of pop songs with no instrumental in the background, and then post them on Instagram. So imagine you load up Instagram, you just woke up, it's 5.30 in the morning, you're just trying to see some cool stuff, maybe a couple inspirational quotes that don't make much sense to you, and you load up Instagram and the first thing you see is, I've got a blank space baby, and I'll write your name. With no music in the background, what are your thoughts? Hmm, I really, really, really enjoy this, or oh my god, that is the cringiest thing I've ever seen. I thought Norwegian death metal was supposed to stay in Norway with Benji. That's right, I was cringing. Livid with cringe, some would say. How the Grinch Stole Cringe Miss. Hmm, maybe a good movie title. If anyone's listening and wants to chop me a couple bones for that gem of a movie title, let me know. But at this point, you know, we're only like 14, so I guess everybody had their cringe phase. Like, there's not many people that didn't post something cringy on Instagram when they're that young. Yes, there's something to be said for posting cringy renditions of a uh, screamo Taylor Swift, which is just really confusing. Are you going for the country vibe? Is it angry? Is it angry country music? Can that be a thing? Can you angrily take somebody for a ride on their big green tractor? I'm not really sure. I didn't grow up on a farm. However, what comes next is even worse. Then we start dating. And you know, when you're dating and you're 14, it's not very serious. Like, if you're 14 right now and you have a girlfriend, I'm not trying to insult you. Obviously, your feelings are your feelings and they're valid. Like, don't get it twisted. But I, I think we all know the odds of you meeting your soulmate when you're 14 are very, very, very slim, and it does not happen to a lot of people. And this is all going on. She's still posting Screamo covers once a week. She called it Screamo Saturday. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. She made a theme, a series for it, like The Office, but for Screamo renditions of pop songs that nobody asked for a Screamo rendition of. But anyways, we're, we're getting weekly Screamo songs, and then she starts dating, and we're 14. 15 and in every week it's a new guy because when you're 14 you date around a lot most of the time you date like a new person every week a new person every month it's not long relationships we're talking about here we're not dating people for a year we're not dating people for nine months we're dating people for short periods of time and every week with her new boyfriend she would post what her name would look like when they got married and talk about how she loved him and how they're going to be together forever and their children will have such a great father and after like boy 37 it gets a little bit old especially with with Screamo Saturday still being a thing, that should have been the red flag. You don't date a girl 
toilet is a screamo rendition of Sorry by Justin Bieber, because that is just what she's gonna do to you after you break up, you know? And after her and her boyfriend of a week would inevitably break up, because, uh, saying that you're going to marry someone you've been dating for a week definitely, definitely, definitely doesn't work when you're 14. She would post the most heartbreaking breakup quotes, you know? Same ones from Pinterest. Like, the same person who made the inspirational quotes got broken up with a week after making the inspirational quotes and decided to just get depressing instead. And they'd be like, sometimes it's the right person at the wrong time on Tuesdays. Don't you, don't you hate Tuesdays, guys? But without all that stuff, right, like, all, all of the Instagram cringe imaginable could not prepare me for what happened when I started to see her in person at school. The, the being in love and getting married to a guy and then the next week being like, he broke my heart and I'll never recover, and then dating somebody the day after that, the, the screamo Saturday, the, the, the incessant, disgusting, inspirational quotes on her Pinterest. See, this girl wasn't content with just posting stuff on Instagram, right? No, 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 that was not enough. Instead, she would also go around school telling everybody, like, critiquing the, their Instagram accounts. And I don't mean this in, like, a ha-ha, she'd be like, I don't like your Instagram way. She had a ticket book. A ticket book where she would write your at and your real name and tell you what you needed to fix about your Instagram because she just got social media. That's her words, not mine. Imagine the girl that does Screamo Saturday telling you that your Instagram posts are lame because she just really gets social media while everybody is like, bruh, Bruh, is your boyfriend of the week broken up with you yet? Like, what do you mean? And she wasn't nice about it either. She wasn't like, hey, I think you post too many selfies. She'd be like, <clears throat> attention, Instagram ticket going to Ryan because he posted a picture in the same shirt twice. That's right. That's a big no-no on Instagram. And I would be like, wait, first of all, I don't care if you like my Instagram, you weirdo. Second of all, Screamo Saturdays aren't even that good. Surprisingly, I never got a ticket, guys. But imagine Screamo Saturday Girl walking up to you telling you that your Instagram sucks while also being in love with every single boy that's ever given her attention ever. From now on, I'm going to go and just comment on everybody's individual Instagram and be like, Instagram ticket goes to. And she would do it like in the worst times ever. Not at lunch. Not... Not when you're just hanging out with the boys. She'd do it in, like, the middle of class. Like, imagine you're just booling in math class trying to do some quadratic formulas, and this girl pulls up. <clears throat> Your Instagram's kind of gross. Cool. Cool, ho. All right? I'm doing algebra. Can you leave me alone for, like, 30 seconds, please? I'm really not feeling this whole, uh, your Instagram kind of sucks because I, do I don't care. I'm in math class. Can you wait 30 seconds till I'm out the door before you start critiquing my social media posting habits? I would really appreciate it. You absolute dingleberry moron. Dingleberried moron is a new one and I'm kind of digging it. I can't lie. And I'm especially not going to take advice from somebody that does Screamo covers of Taylor Swift. And if you like Screamo, that's fine, but don't post it on Instagram with no music in the background and expect me to be a fan. So if you're watching this, your Instagram sucked then and it still sucks now. And you're the cringiest girl I've ever interacted with in my entire life. <laughs> So my brother's in middle school, which means uh, it's it's a very awkward time of your life. You know, middle school actually is the worst part of school. I know what you guys are thinking, but but high school is so much harder, and that's true. But the problem with middle school is everyone's going through puberty, everybody's awkward, everybody has no idea who they actually are as a person, and therefore it actually might be the worst school experience of all time. And most middle schoolers are awkward. You know, most middle schoolers definitely uh, haven't haven't come into themselves and who they're going to be forever yet. And uh, I volunteer at my brother's school to just help his teachers do things around the classroom and, y you know, I kind of stay low-key about it. I'm usually in the front office just doing things for principal's aid and stuff, but I volunteer there once or twice a week. And there was a kid I had an encounter with that actually might be the cringiest person to ever exist. And like I said, middle school is pretty rough, so if I'm admitting that this person is super cringy, then you gotta know it's pretty bad. And just to paint a picture of this kid, he's about 4'3 in middle school, so he's mega short, alright? Like, the first time I saw him, I thought a gnome popped out of the cut out of a platform 9 and 3 quarter and was really just walking around this middle school. I genuinely thought a dwarf popped out of Dungeons and Dragons and was pulling up to the middle school ready to do a quest. And that's how short this kid was, you know? Like, goblins were real. 
And, and that's not what makes him cringy, but it's what he does with his height that makes him cringy, you know? The first time I ran into him, he was standing outside of the principal's office waiting to get yelled at for trying to sneak into the girl's bathroom, you know? I don't know if he thought his height, like, made him invisible. He was like, ah, you know, everybody's looking straight around. They'll never see me coming. He's, like, dodging in between their legs or whatever. But that's the first time I ever had an interaction with him is with him trying to sneak into the girl's bathroom, which is pretty cringe on its own, right? Like, first of all, bro, I understand you're in middle school. Girls are like, uh, cooties or, or whatever. You're starting to like them or whatever. You, you don't want to see girls in the bathroom, dog. There is nothing attractive about a girl trying to squeeze out a steaming pile of crap. But apparently this kid, you know, was like, oh, better get into the girl's bathroom. I heard there's jewelry in there. So like I said, my first interaction, my first time ever seeing this kid is when he's waiting outside the principal's office for doing arguably one of the weirdest things you can possibly do in school. You know, like that's up there with eating grapes, spitting them out, and then eating them again, all right? But somehow, some way, somehow, this kid gets weirder. So I kind of go home and I talk to my brother about him. And my brother's like, oh yeah, that kid's big weird. He's done a lot of stuff like that this year. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, can, you, can you tell me what, dude? Because I kind of want to know how weird this kid is. Like, should it be a DEFCON 1 situation? Should I be prepared to see him every time I'm there? He goes, all right, all right, Ryan, sit down. I'll let you know what's going on. So my brother basically proceeds to tell me that this kid not only has a weird thing where he tries to sneak into places he shouldn't be, but he also uh, tried to get kids to join his cult. I guess, like, he was convinced that the Ender Dragon from Minecraft is real and there was a portal somewhere in China. So th this kid actually believes the Ender Dragon from Minecraft Craft is booling around China somewhere just sitting back relaxing and he was trying to convince kids at school that they should all crowdfund a trip to China and go meet the Ender Dragon. And if you believe an Ender Dragon is real and that he's the god of the universe and is currently living in Beijing, you might be crazy. But my brother proceeds to then tell me that that's not the worst part of this story, you know. It's one thing if you're gonna believe the Ender Dragon is real and living in China, but it's another thing that this kid has a biting problem and anyone who would tell him that it's ridiculous that the Ender Dragon was real and that it definitely wasn't living in China, he would bite. Like, uh, you know what, man? I know you disagree strongly with my idea that a Minecraft character is somehow the god of the universe and living in China, but instead of respectfully disagreeing and going about my culty ways, I'm just gonna bite you on the ankle. Like, dog, are, are you kidding me? This kid's the size of a chihuahua. If you bit me, I would just, like, punt him. I I'm not even kidding. I'd drop kick this kid so far, I'd get recruited to the NFL to be a punter for the Detroit Lions, you know? So whatever, so far I've learned that this kid is a biter who uh, has a weird thing for Minecraft mobs that don't actually have any power in the real world, you know? Call me crazy, but I don't think the Ender Dragon is actually kicking around Beijing, making all the decisions there, you know? Like, uh, who, who does China have to thank for their great economy and job growth? Yep, the Ender Dragon, you know, he bulled out there in 2009 when the full version of Minecraft released and has been just running things ever since. So whatever, kid's in a cult, you know, kid bites people, yada yada yada, it can't get worse, right? Right, Scrubby? The next time I go into his school though i'm sitting there you know stacking some papers just booling cooling uh I, I don't know what what other words rhyme with cooling but i'm sitting there and the kid walks in escorted by not one not two not three but four teachers all of them keeping their distance and just kind of telling him where to go so uh obviously this kid has half you know the secret service escorting him to the office that means he probably did something pretty bad because nine times out of ten if you're in middle school you're like go to the principal's office and that's the end of it but this man's got a full bodyguard unit walking him around everywhere dog. I'm surprised he wasn't in handcuffs in an orange jumpsuit because the teachers that were escorting him actually looked terrified of the kid. And I don't know how you're terrified of something that's 4-3, you know? It's not like he's a goblin that can turn invisible. Uh, actually, that might make sense. He got the powers from the Ender Dragon. But, like, he's not a goblin. He can't turn invisible. I don't know why you're afraid of a kid you can literally drop kick 60 yards to the end of the end zone at an NFL game. But whatever. These teachers look scared. So he walks up and uh, the, the principal's aide is like, okay, what did he do? And the teachers kind of look around and they, they try to whisper. But obviously, I got the ears of an owl dog, alright? I'm superhuman. I'm basically an X-Men because I can eavesdrop better than anyone on this side of the Mississippi. The entire FBI spying regiment has nothing on my eavesdropping skills. So I'm eavesdropping and they basically say this. Well, you know, he, he does have a biting problem and I guess his teacher caught him drawing uh, inappropriate things in class and when, when she tried to take his notebook, he bit her. This kid really was drawing some inappropriate stuff in class. I, I don't really care about that. That's not that cringe. But when the teacher was like, hey kid, please stop instead of being like no it's my notebook went hmm you know what i have three options here i can either politely give her the notebook yell and cause a scene or c bite her like th th this kid's brain is really so backwards that he went hmm better get my dental implants done on miss miss uh, miss foster's arm i don't know what the teacher's name was but it was like hey let's just clamp down on these pearly whites here i'm a clamshell and that's my pearl baby 
Mmm, tasty. It tastes like salt. Were you sweating today? Are you a PE teacher? I don't know what the situation was, but whatever. This kid's biting a teacher. And at this point, he, he's pretty screwed. Like, this school will put up with a lot of bad things, okay? Don't get me wrong. They let him sneak into the girl's bathroom. Eh, slap on the wrist. But the second you start biting teachers, you've gone too far. So whatever. He's getting yelled at by the principal, and they're like, we're gonna call your parents. And he goes, go for it. Like, and he says it with such confidence when I'm listening through the door that I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy must have a secret weapon. Like, somewhere along the line, he might have actually become a goblin that can turn invisible. So, I I'm chilling, waiting for his mom to come in, because obviously, a kid of this level of cringe, biting teachers, biting kids, believing in an ender dragon god, has gotta have a secret trump card somewhere to be this confident, while being this short, okay? Like I said, I am looking into the eyes of a goblin that bites people, and, and for some reason, teachers are afraid of him. And that's when I hear it. I hear something that makes my blood boil, okay? The, the hair on the back of my neck stands up. The only thing that can strike fear into any man in America, no matter how tough you are, a Karen. That's right. So they called his parents and demanded that they come in and have a conference about this kid's inappropriate behavior. And from the second the door opened, the entire room got chilled. And in walks the most, may I talk to your manager person, except for my neighbor. I, I don't I don't know how people are just Karens and nobody says anything. If I was married to a Karen, I would file for divorce instantly, all right? Like, you wouldn't even have time to close the door. My divorce would be filed so quickly. But somewhere along the line, someone decided to reproduce with a Karen. And stand Standing in front of me was the mom of the cringy Minecraft biting kid. And this mother has the nerve, the audacity, to go to the principal and basically be like, well, I don't see the problem here. Maybe your teacher shouldn't be trying to take my son's notebook away and then we wouldn't have any problems. This Karen was such a Karen, such an absolute may I talk to your manager beast, that when her son bit a teacher and was convincing kids to join his cult while drawing inappropriate things, she went, meh, not that big of a deal. Maybe your teacher should be better. And at this point, I can hear the frustration in the principal's voice and he's just kind of like, ma'am, your son's behavior is highly inappropriate. And she covers the kid's ears. There was like a crack in the door, alright? I'm spying. I'm basically like, you know when the FBI is sitting outside of your house and their surveillance van? Uh, just me, just me, anyways. And they're kind of like looking through your window. That's what I'm doing to Karen in this principal's conversation. And I can see her put her hands over his ears and start yelling at the principal. Like, first of all, yes, your measly hands over this kid's ears while you're yelling is gonna make him not hear a word. What an absolute genius, Karen. I don't know where you studied at college, but clearly, you are so smart that you have single handedly outsmarted every piece of science ever and have discovered the ultimate secret. Putting hands over your kids' ears means they can't hear a single thing ever in the history of the world. And she starts yelling at the principal, how dare he accuse her son of such things, and he is a very special boy who needs special teaching. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe you can make that argument the first time he gets caught doing some weird stuff, but after he snuck into the girl's bathroom, bit a teacher, and convinced kids to join a cult, you kind of lose all ground to stand on, Karen. Like, I I'm sorry, you kind of lose all arguing after your kid is this weird, but whatever. She's making the argument, and the principal gets really quiet after she's done and says, are you finished? And she says, yes, I am. And he says, well, that's fantastic. I agree. Your son needs special teaching. That's why uh, we're expelling him. He is no longer welcome at our school. And the mom starts screaming, how dare you? You will be hearing from my lawyer. Why do Karens always go for the lawsuit, dog? Like, all right, sue me. Whatever. It's better than dealing with Karen. I would rather get sued 30 times than ever have to have a Karen's kid at my school. Because, you know what? I feel bad for the kid. Obviously, the kid's got some issues he needs to work through. Obviously, it's very cringy for what he's doing. And I'm not saying he's innocent. But when you have a mom like Karen, it, th that, that's why you're messed up, dude. Like, no wonder the kid's a little weird. His mom is screaming at principal saying, How dare you call my son anything but a princess. I, 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 uh, that's my frustration noise. That's how frustrating it is to watch Karens exist. So obviously the mom is freaking out and the principal puts his foot down. He's like, no, you're done. And the poor kid is crying at this point and is like, mom, stop, stop, stop. It's okay. It's okay. And, and it was just really awkward as they left because they were both like being weird. And the mom's yelling at everyone she can, like anyone who got in her way. She's like, excuse me. Like uh, she, she was not, not used to losing, but you know, sometimes talking to the manager doesn't work, Karen. It backfires and you get your kid expelled. <laughs> So, uh, in my junior year of high school, I had this English class that was pretty dope. Our teacher was pretty chill, and, uh, for the most part, we would just kind of goof off in our class. Like, don't get me wrong, we learned some stuff, but it was definitely a class where you would joke around a lot. And there was this one kid who would constantly talk about being a furry and having a fursuit and how he was gonna wear it to school. And, uh, I thought he was kidding, you know, because... 
it's usually not something people flex that they're a furry and like if you are a furry and you're watching this video I have nothing against you okay like for the most part do what you want to do if you want to dress up as an animal it's not my cup of tea I might make a joke or two but I'm not gonna stop you at the end of the day it's your life and if you feel like it's gonna add to your life to dress up as a furry go for it dude I, I don't care you know if that's what makes you happy go for it live and let live you know like sure I'm gonna make a couple jokes about how it's kind of weird to be a furry but if that's what you want to do with your life then go for it and uh, this kid was always flexing it and I just thought he was kidding because the way he would say it was just funny he would be like I'm not comfortable in my human skin I want to take it off with a cheese grater like which which sounds like a joke you know because I even think furries out there definitely do not want to cheese grater their own skin off like a crappy pizza topping all right like ah welcome to Domino's today we got old furry human skin on our pizzas how are you doing today so obviously I thought this kid was kidding because uh, it's not every day you hear somebody say that they want to uh, cheese grater off their skin. That, that, that's not a common colloquialism up in high school. Whatever, this kid was definitely weird in other ways too. It wasn't just the fact he was constantly talking about taking his skin off with a cheese grater, alright? This is one of those kids that, I, I don't know what it was about him, but he just had to always have the edgiest thing to say. I'm sure you guys have a friend like this, you know? Like if we're in English class talking about poetry he would he would get up and talk about how he writes poems to battle his depression blah, blah, blah. like you know and, and look I get it people go through hard things people experience a lot but when one second you're flexing the fact that you want to cut your skin off with a cheese grater and the next second you're flexing the fact that you write poetry when you're feeling sad these two things one of these things is not like the other you know it, it, it's just not and beyond that he would also just make it really hard to be friends with him like he had this complex that he was smarter than everyone you know so you would try to be nice to him and try to have a normal conversation with a kid and it would usually end with him calling you an idiot who doesn't understand the intricacies of life like yes I'm sorry you are so much smarter than me you are superior in every way shape or form that is why you have no friends you sit alone at lunch because your brain is too big to sit next to everybody else you know and like I, I would try to be the kids friend uh, not because I really thought he was a dope dude but because I just felt bad that nobody else was his friend and he would kind of get picked on sometimes then he would just make it really hard like he would call me an idiot and act like there was no way I could understand what he's going through because it's just complicated I have the problems of an animal and a human and I was like all right dude well then uh, I guess you don't need me to be your friend you know so it's not like this kid was the type of person where people would just picked on him for no reason he definitely was a little bit of a douche canoe Daniel you know and uh, being a furry and asking to chop off your skin with a cheese grater does not help your situation when it comes to people picking on you so we had this day coming up and it was essentially a uh, career day I, I don't know how to explain it. it was like basically you dress for the career you wanted you know if that if that makes sense so you would uh, come to school dressed as a lawyer if you wanted to be a lawyer you'd come to school dressed as a doctor if you wanted to be a doctor I'm not really sure what it was supposed to do like inspire the youth or whatever whatever dumb teachers think you ever notice that teachers do this thing where they act like it's super inspirational to like do things that make no sense you know I remember my teacher would make us write letters to professions that we wanted to be like as if the, you know that was gonna inspire us somehow to be a lawyer 10 years from now I was gonna be looking back and be like you know when I wrote a letter to a sanitation man in the eighth grade I really knew that I wanted to be a garbage man I, I don't really get the purpose of dressing up for the career you want in high school like you're basically playing extreme dress up but whatever it's what our school made us do so obviously the day is coming up and it was a grade in our English class that we had to dress up for the career we wanted so it's really not optional for us you know like hey you could not dress up but then you're gonna get a bad grade so you really had to just full send and dress up as the career you wanted and uh, I decided to be a little bit of a sarcastic douche canoe and uh, I decided to dress up as Ronald McDonald so I pull up in the whole clown outfit really getting ready to clown on some people I thought it was funny mainly because I didn't really know what I wanted my career to be I thought I might want to be a lawyer but I didn't know for the most part so I figured dressing up as a clown would be the best move because I, I kind of am a clown you know no one takes me seriously I, I make a lot of jokes so I roll up wearing a clown costume and uh, I did it ironically everybody kind of knew that I was joking around I didn't actually want to be a clown I got a couple laughs out of it teachers gave me weird looks my, my job here was done you know I did my job of making people giggle at the fact that I dressed up as a clown but whatever the first couple periods go by just fine I'm honking my nose you know making fun of everybody because I'm a clown I'm just doing my future career and uh, I walk into English class and sure enough sitting there in the middle of class is a full-blown furry okay like and I'm not talking just the head mask no 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 homeboy pulled up in his whole fursuit which first of all okay here's the thing if you want to wear your fursuit that's fine go for it more power to you man be yourself 
But really, for career day, you sat there and went, damn, I want to be a furry for my career? Who's going to pay you to be a furry? Last time I checked, there's not some company out there like, damn, get the salary book out. Kids got a fursuit and a massive amount of potential. So obviously, people start walking in and are staring at this kid like, uh, this is, this is kind of weird, you know? Like, here's this kid dressed up as a fox, mask on and everything, sitting in an English class, getting ready to write a poem about how hard it is to be a furry or whatever, and everybody in class is just kind of looking at him like, this can't be real life because no one would ever do this to themselves. It's basically social suicide. So the kids are coming in and obviously everybody's staring at the furry and wondering what's gonna go down, and our teacher walks in and sees him and basically says, hey, you know, I understand it's, it's your, your outfit or whatever but uh, I'm gonna need you to take the mask off because I don't feel comfortable teaching somebody with a mask on you know and this kid acts like she actually just said the n-word she's like how or he excuse me is like how dare you ask me to remove my mask and take off this costume it's a part of me I am a furry I am part animal and the fact that you don't understand that this is a part of me is disgusting I refuse to take my mask off and the teacher's like, well, the school dress code is you're not allowed to wear masks. It's a safety concern. Will you please take off your mask? I'm not saying you can't be a furry or whatever, but please just take off your mask. And uh, this kid proceeds to not take these words into consideration, you know? And the truth of the matter is, uh, it was not okay with the rules to wear masks at our school. You just didn't wear masks. I don't know why. Maybe they thought that Hannibal Lecter was going to pull up to the school and start eating children. But you're just not allowed to wear masks, and everybody knew that. But this kid acts like she is single-handedly destroying the furry community. Because he stands up and starts screaming about how... Furries are the most prosecuted group of individuals in America and across the nation every day they're discriminated against. And, dude, I, I hate to break it to you, furries aren't discriminated against because for the most part, no one can tell if you're a furry, alright? If you're in and out in normal people clothes, no one's gonna assume that you want to dress up as a fox in your spare time. And not to mention, you're not oppressed. Yeah, people make fun of furries, but I highly doubt out there is somebody who's like, you know what? In my corporation, I will not hire a furry. I refuse. I refuse to talk to a furry. For the most part, if you're a normal person, uh, no one's gonna know you're a furry, dude. But sure, sure, keep talking about how furries are oppressed. You know, people are just really out there beating furries with nightsticks every day, apparently, in this kid's mind. It it's just not happening. So he's screaming about how furries are oppressed and how every day he's, he's messed with because he's a furry, and then flips his desk, actually takes his little furry paws, flips over his desk, and keeps screaming. So at this point, our teacher's like, okay, obviously, I pressed a couple buttons that have never been pressed before. This kid is having a full-on mental breakdown, and I have no idea what to do. So she calls the office security guy and basically is like, yeah, I have a kid in a fox costume freaking out. And when she says fox costume, furry boy with all of his might screams, it's not a costume. Yes, that is right, man. You are actually a fox. Keep being that delusional dude who legitimately thinks that he became an animal overnight by wearing a costume. So uh, the security guy pulls up to the door and he's looking in. I don't know what he was expecting, but it's not every day in high school where you hear a call over the radio that you have a rabid animal freaking out and flipping over desks. So he walks in and he's like, whoa, I, I wasn't expecting an actual fox. And the kid doesn't say a word. He growls like, a, like an animal and just charges this security guard full speed, uh, full speed ahead. If the kid had teeth, I'm pretty sure he would have chomped down. Maybe tried to get a chunk out of the guy's arm or something. So obviously our security guard is a big dude. Just kind of is looking at this weird frail skinny kid in a fox costume charging him full speed and just proceeds to put him in a headlock. Um, which our security guards, like, if they were attacked, they had the ability to do so. It wasn't a headlock as he was choking him out or anything. It was just, like, trying to make the kid calm down because he was freaking out and he had no clue what to do. So the kid is growling and basically under his breath, like, I will eat you. I'm gonna bite you. Rah, rah, you can't hold back the fox. Rah. And the entire class is, like, laughing at this point because this skinny kid is hysterically locked in a headlock while screaming about how he's going to bite everyone. Like, yeah, that's gonna make you not look weird, bro. Sorry. Why do people not like furries? Maybe because we just witnessed one have a mental breakdown and threatened to bite a security guard. That's not doing anything good for your cause, dude. I'm sorry. So the guy's having an absolute freak out, threatening to bite the security guard in his furry costume, just going on and on about how furries are discriminated against. And honestly, dude, people were just giving you weird looks. Nobody was mad at you. You got asked to take your mask off. 
That's literally it. I don't know what you expected to happen, but no one was sitting here like, oh, I will never associate with a furry again. Your mental breakdown was all on your own, bro. So uh, he's fighting with the security guard for probably five minutes. The security guard says, I'm going to need somebody else to carry this kid with me. And uh, they, they finally subdue the kid to security guards and they take off his mask. And the kid acts like they actually just tore off a piece of his ears. He's howling in pain. My face! My face! You guys ripped off my face! I don't understand how deep this kid was in a furry character. But when they took off his mask to carry him to the office, he acted like they actually Hannibal lector took off his face with a cheese grater and were wearing it as a mask. To this day, I have never seen anyone have such a freak out over taking off a Halloween costume mask. And I know it's more to that than furries. But trust me, if you wear it to school and attack a security guard, you kind of deserve to get your furry mask taken off. I I'm not going to apologize for that. That's just what happens in these scenarios. So one takes his arm and one takes him legs and they take him to the principal's office where uh, he basically gets told that he's going to go to a special school. There's a school in Las Vegas where it's for kids with behavioral issues that need a psychologist. And they, uh, they decide that would probably be the best fit for him, which is probably a good idea because he actually thinks he's a fox and is delusional to the point of fighting security guards with his fox costume on. It's probably a good idea to separate him from the general population, you know? Not the type of person you want to keep around young children. So in high school every year, my school would put on a talent show, generally found to, you know, figure out what kids had talent and which ones didn't. And of course, I don't really have any talent. I play video games and talk about stuff on the internet. That's by far my biggest talent. So I was never involved in being in the show, but I had a lot of talented friends that could play music and do cool stuff. And they would always be like, hey, Ryan, can you come to the show and support me? And I'm not going to say no. If my friend wants me to come support him while he's showing off his talent, absolutely no problem. So this year was no exception. My friend was playing guitar in the talent show and was like, hey, Ryan, you know, it'd mean a lot to me if I came. And I was like, yeah, for sure, man. That's what she said. But I'll definitely try to stop by and watch the talent show. No problem, because that's what you do. You support your friends. And if you don't support your friends, you're kind of a bad friend. So the night comes and I head into to my school's auditorium ready to you know watch some talent shows see what my school has to offer in terms of people with naturally good abilities and hopefully have a great time get a good story out of it because uh, my friend would win or something I don't really know and what I found was so much better than just someone playing the guitar ladies and gentlemen so as I was walking in they handed out this little brochure that had everybody's talent and what their show was gonna be and who they were and about halfway down three acts after my friend was the Minecraft club you see my school was super open to having clubs they thought it made them look better to like school boards and whatnot so basically any club that anyone wanted to make the school would just let you do it and a group of kids that I'm gonna politely say were nerds with without using a different word, decided that they were going to start a Minecraft club. And every day after school, they would hang out in this teacher's computer lab and play Minecraft for hours at a time. And they were pretty much a meme amongst the school. They would always do really funny things at the Minecraft club that were pretty cringy. And most of the people in school, like, they were pretty harmless, but, you know, it was just kind of something we would laugh at amongst ourselves that the Minecraft club was a real thing at our school. And now they were doing a show in the talent show, which meant I just couldn't ignore it anymore. I was going to be faced with the hardest decision of my life. Do I laugh? And the description for what the Minecraft club was going to do at the talent show was the live world of Minecraft. And I knew instantly that this was going to be a classic take a picture for my cringe compilation material. So for the beginning of the talent show, I am waiting in patient anticipation of what I can only assume is going to be the greatest thing I've ever seen. So it comes and goes. My friend does do a really good job. He's great at guitar. Really talented guy. I'm pretty sure you're watching this. Great job, bro. But finally, the lights dim and the announcer says, And welcome to the stage, the Minecraft Club. And my eyes are glistening. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to see what they have to offer. The C14 music starts playing, which is, makes me super nostalgic. Like, whenever I hear the Minecraft intro now, I just cry about the fact that I'm not a 12-year-old on my Xbox. But at the time, I was hyped. And out crawls, and yes, I mean crawls, a kid wearing a pink painted cardboard box that looks like a Minecraft pig. And he is on all fours, crawling across the stage. And at this point, I am like, this is going to be the greatest thing I've ever seen. Because let me paint this picture for you. Here you are in an auditorium filled with people waiting to see talent. Parents, grandmas, everyone. And on stage, you as a 17-year-old fat kid in a cardboard box painted to look like a Minecraft kid crawling across the floor like some kind of snake demon from the game Doom, okay? That is the situation we're in. 
So of course, I'm already trying to contain my laughter, and it's really difficult. Like, you tell me watching a 17-year-old kid crawl across the floor in a pig costume isn't hard not to laugh at. And if you can say that, then you have no sense of humor, and you kind of deserve whatever comes to you, because you have no soul, because that's the funniest thing I could ever imagine. But it doesn't just end with a kid crawling across the floor in a pig. The music's playing, and out walks a kid in full-blown cardboard Minecraft Steve armor. Well, not armor, just in the Minecraft Steve suit, with a microphone, and he goes... Gee, what a strange world. I sure am glad that I have my friends here to craft with me. And out walks three more kids, all wearing Minecraft skin renditions of themselves. Keep in mind, this is high school. It's not middle school. It's not elementary school. All of these people can basically drive, and they are wearing Minecraft costumes on the stage. Also, how bad for the kid that was the pig? Like, imagine your kid comes home, Mom, Mom, we're going to be in the talent show for Minecraft Club. You're like, oh, that's so great, honey. What are you? Well, most of them are going to be people, but I get to be the pig, and I don't get to talk. <laughs> All right, son. All right. So whatever, these Minecraft characters on stage, and they start going through a day in the life of Minecraft. They're punching trees, and the entire audience is just silent, because like I said, most people in the audience are parents, grandmas, people there to support their dear Aunt Sally. But there is a super loud corner of the auditorium, and I look over, and it's the parents of all the kids in Minecraft Club. And they're clapping and applauding and laughing at the play-by-play -play narration, which is basically a Let's Play going on live in front of us. So, of course, I'm trying not to laugh because this is by far the cringiest thing I think I've ever seen in person. So for the next 10 minutes, I have to watch these kids break down Minecraft. There's full set design, by the way. This was not a small production. There's trees that they're punching and pulling blocks out of. They're talking about mining diamonds. And in the culmination of it all, ladies and gentlemen, the finale, after watching this for 20 grueling minutes of kids in Minecraft costumes going back and forth, the pig never left the stage. Poor kid didn't even get to say anything other than oink the entire time. They go through the end portal, and they all hold hands with their little block arms and go, All right, guys, together on three. Friendship is key. And at this point, I can't hold it in anymore. I'm laughing. The people in my row are looking at me because I look like a terrible person. They said friendship is key, and I start giggling. But I mean, come on. There are people wearing Minecraft skins on stage talking about how friendship is magic, like a bad episode of Barney the Dinosaur in, like, 2015. And you expect me not to be giggling, all right? This is hysterical. This is the greatest thing I have ever seen. I wish I would have filmed it. If I had film of it, I would put it in the video right now. So I'm laughing hysterically. They jump in the end portal, and out comes, hanging up on wires, a fake ender dragon made out of paper. But you might be thinking, Ryan, it can't be that bad. It's a pretty sizable ender dragon, probably weighs enough to knock somebody down. That's going to be important. And I guess whoever was backstage trying to control the ender dragon was probably getting confused with their cardboard arms. Maybe got a cardboard cut on the top of his shoulder. Because as he's trying to maneuver it to be fighting the Minecraft characters that are supposedly sitting in front of me on stage, it drops to the ground and knocks over... Three of the Minecraft players that are supposedly trying to fight the Ender Dragon. And the kids all just kind of look like, I don't know what to do. So it's not like it was planned or anything. So man down on stage, Saving Private Ryan is about to initiate. The Ender Dragon has basically crushed these kids' cardboard costumes. And if they're not saved soon, they might actually get smothered to death by a fake paper Ender Dragon at a talent show. And that would not be a way to go. Imagine on your tombstone it says... Here lies Alex Smith, crushed by a fake paper mache ender dragon at a talent show. If only the talent was real. LOL, SMH, 69, no scopes only. Hashtag ender dragon for life. So now the entire audience is laughing, and the fans and the parents of the Minecraft club are saying, It's not funny! Stop laughing! Those are our children on stage! Sorry, your kid just got RKO'd by a paper mache dragon and you expect people not to be laughing? Hate to break it to you, people are definitely going to laugh at their misfortune. It's nothing against you. It'd be hilarious if anyone was crushed by a giant paper dragon. It's even funnier because your kids are wearing fake Minecraft costumes. So whatever, they somehow get the paper dragon off the kids without incident, and the rest of the talent show goes on. Everybody still has has the burning memory of four kids trapped underneath a paper mache dragon like it's no tomorrow. And we get to the end and they're doing the award thing and they're basically like, so uh, our judges have tallied the votes. And in first place we have, and it was some girl who was singing, she was a really good singer. And I swear, the look on the Minecraft kid's face when they didn't win was pure disgust. And one of them goes, are you kidding me? And the entire audience is like, what is going on? Because here is the Minecraft kids saying that they should have won the talent show when they didn't even get to finish their entire play without somebody basically dying to their paper dragon. 
So they start getting mad at the fact that they didn't win the talent show, and the judges are kind of having this look on their face like, what? So they have to politely pity give these kids third place in the talent show for their absolutely disgusting, terrible Minecraft play, which was just not good to watch. It wasn't good acting. None of you are winning an Oscar. None of you are superheroes. You couldn't even do a Minecraft play right. And what's even funnier is when they came to school on Monday, people were making jokes about the fact that there was a, uh, a, a Minecraft show at the talent show, and they just couldn't wrap their hands around why that was funny to everybody. They thought we were just some silly haters, when in reality, when you're 16, 17 years old, the last thing you should ever want to do in public is dress up like a Minecraft character and have a play. Moral of the story, if your kid ever comes to you and says, Hey mom, can I please be in the talent show with me in my Minecraft club? Please say no, because the only thing that's going to happen is crowds are going to laugh at them. And if you have the audacity to get mad when your crappy Minecraft club doesn't win the talent show, then you're just a bad person, and uh, you shouldn't be surprised when things that are pretty obvious happen. That's like it raining and you being like, Oh my god, why am I wet? Well, because you did a Minecraft show with a talent show. <laughs>
flowers to a group project. And it wasn't just them two in the group. And he hands it to her and he says, For a group cannot be complete without flowers in the prettiest woman's hands. And the worst part is, there were other girls in the group, bro. He really went, nah, you ain't pretty enough to give flowers to you, hunk of hut. Like, I, I, I ain't doing anything with you, okay? This only goes to the pretty girl. So she gave... Uh, the flowers to her, and she's like, oh, that's very sweet. Thank you, you know? Like, it's a little bit bizarre to get handed flowers when you're just trying to work on your group project, but hey, apparently that's something that some people do. They're just trying to give flowers out in the group project. And he says that it's a tradition. Like, apparently, when group projects first became a thing in history, you were supposed to give flowers to the prettiest girl, which has got to be a lie, because I just feel like that's so unnecessary, bro. Like, who is sitting there? You know, it is in fact a British tradition to give flowers to the prettiest girl in your group project. Like, that's just not true, bro. I I'm pretty sure Neckbeard Boy was just trying to sound smart. He was like, yeah, I'm cultured. I know a lot of traditions. So whatever, the entire time they're working on this group project, he's like uncomfortably hitting on her, right? Like, he's like, oh, yeah, well, I'll, t I'll tell you guys what. This group might be great, but, you know, she's so pretty. Like, just weird stuff. And it's making her a little bit uncomfortable because she's like, hey, man, look, I appreciate the compliments. I appreciate you thinking that I'm pretty. I'm trying to get this group project done for our college assignment, so if you could just not keep hitting on me and distracting us from work so we can get this done, that would be great. But whatever, he keeps hitting on her and makes her very uncomfortable, like, the entire night when they're working on the project. So that night is coming to an end, and he's like, hey, let me walk you back to your uh, apartment and she's like no it's really okay like I don't really need an escort I know how to get home it's not that dark plus you're really creepy he's like nonsense I'm walking my date home and she's like dude we're not on a date and he says yes we are you know um, regardless of whether or not it was school assigned I can feel the vibe that you're super into me so like I know this is a date and she's like well uh, the, the vibe you're getting is wrong because this is not a date, bro. And he's like, yes, it is. Like, this is a date. And she's like, no, it's not. And he keeps arguing with her, yes, it is. Which, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you guys all this little tip, all you boys out there. Uh, if you're on a date with a girl and she says, it's not a date, I don't like you. You might just want to say that it's not a date because it's less embarrassing to do that than it is to be like, oh, no, yeah, we're definitely dating 100%. When, uh, trust me, she's just not that into you, bro. So whatever, he starts to get mad at her because she says, no, we're not on a date. And he's like, you stupid women are all the same. I don't know who you think you are. You have the right to turn down a nice guy. Like, I've been nothing but nice to you. I don't understand why you don't want to date me. And she's like, well, I mean, yeah, you, you've tried to be nice. You're coming on a little strong, though. And even then, I don't owe you anything just because you're being nice. He's like, that's not true. Girls owe it to nice guys to give them a chance because you guys never do normally, which I mean, bruh, girls don't really owe you anything, okay? I don't care how nice you are to Susie. She does not owe you a date. Like, that's not an actual thing. And so at this point, the girl is fed up with being nice, and she's like, look, I don't like you, I don't like you, we're never gonna go on a date, so just let it go. And he looks at her and says, we are going to date, there's nothing you can do about it, I'm gonna make you mine, like, you are going to date me, you don't have a choice. And she's like, what are you talking about, I have a choice, I'm not going to date you, you're creepy, you're weird, leave me alone, I don't wanna date you. And he's like, no, you're going to be mine, like, I don't care if I have to stalk you. Uh, you're gonna be mine, and I think he would thought that was endearing, you know, that she was gonna be like, oh my god, really? You'd stalk me? You'd risk going to prison for me? That's so sweet. But in reality, it just made her go like, wow, this guy is actually a psychopath. Like, no joke, he's an actual psychopath. So whatever, he calls her a bunch of mean names and basically says that she's an idiot for not dating him and she's gonna ruin his life and yada yada yada. Th this is gonna be the biggest mistake she ever made. Like, usual nice guy stuff, r slash, you have to date me because I wasn't a jerk to you type B, you know? And so this is all going on and she's like, whatever. So she gets home without him walking her home and she thinks that's gonna be the end of it, right, bruh? Well, she wakes up the next day, and when she goes outside to, like, start walking to class, the guy is standing there, and he walks up to her and says, I'm sorry about last night. I didn't mean to be so mean. Um... I, I'm gonna walk you to class. She's like, no, I don't want you to walk me to class. Like, you're creepy. You threatened to ruin my life because I wouldn't date you yesterday. No, like, I don't want you to walk me to class. I really don't. And he's like, well, you know, you owe it to me. Like, I'm a nice guy. You owe me the a, a chance to redeem myself. And she's like, I don't owe you anything. And keep in mind, this is like outside of a dorm on a college campus. So it's starting to get hustling and bustling out here, right? Like, everything's starting to get a little active. 
and Neckbeard Goy is getting increasingly agitated, right? At this point, he's like, no, you owe me a chance to date you. And it gets so loud and so obnoxious that people that are walking by walk up and are like, is everything okay here? And he's like, yes, this woman just doesn't know her place and, like, she needs to give me a chance because I've been a nice guy. And obviously, people that are walking up are definitely not giant fans of this guy saying that women owe him for uh, being nice. That, like, oh, yeah, she owes me because I was nice to her, right? So everybody, like, breaks them up and she thinks that's the end of it. He's like, whatever, I'll see you in class. She's like, yeah, no thanks. Uh, she gets moved out of the group. She talks to the professor. He's like, yeah, that's a little bit bizarre. And uh, she she's like yeah this is kind of creepy well uh, apparently he didn't get the memo because the next day he walks up to her when she's chilling in like the the cafeteria area and starts yelling at her why did you get removed from the group like that was the way we were gonna bond and connect that was the story we were gonna tell our kids when we got married like uh you know <clears throat> call me crazy here but maybe uh low-key stalking a girl is not the best way to get them to want to marry you you know i'm not an expert okay i don't have a wife but i can tell you right now the way you get girls to want to marry you is not saying that they have to marry you otherwise you're going to like ruin their grade and stalk them forever and so at that point he would basically harass her whenever uh he saw her but she started learning his schedule and she would avoid him she never reported him which is weird to me like call me crazy here the second somebody is standing outside where i live threatening to like make my life miserable is when uh you know i i'm just not down for it so it was my junior year of high school and that meant that prom was coming up and uh, i've made a story time about me not having the best time at prom but that's another story time but regardless kids all around the school are like asking each other out everybody's trying to get a date to prom and uh you know i'm not trying to say that high school movies are realistic but for some reason at my school everyone was super stressed about getting a prom date all right i wasn't too pressed because i was like eh, it's prom i'm like 17 who really cares but you know sometimes you you just gotta send it and uh there was this girl in one of my classes Classes, whose name was I'll name her Shalissa and Shalissa was one of the most popular girls in the school She was super pretty. She was super nice. She was super funny Overall just somebody that basically every guy in the school wanted to ask the prom But she had a very particular friend group. All right. She was uh, a cheerleader She hung out with Jock. She hung out with those types of people and I'm not saying like uh, clicks can't mix I think that's really stupid But you know the odds of her going to prom with somebody that was outside of her group of friends is slim to none because you want to go to prom with your friends it's not like ah prom better go with the furry you know like that's never something that pops into somebody's mind if they're not a furry in the first place now that's important because there was another kid in our class that I had with Shalissa whose uh, name is gonna be Tony for this story and Tony is the kid who previously on my channel I talked about wearing his fursuit into class to prove to us that furries are people too to prove a point to the teacher that furries aren't weird yeah uh, and something tells me that wearing a fursuit inside of a high school classroom doesn't convince anyone that you're not weird it kind of does the opposite like call me crazy here but walking into English class and seeing a man in a full-on fursuit screaming we're people too doesn't make me go oh yeah that guy's perfectly normal and definitely has nothing weird going on mentally no I thought you were a crazy person because you were a crazy person and I sat at a table like a group of four desks with the furry kid and furry kid starts telling me how he's gonna ask Shalissa to prom and everybody at the table kind of gives him a weird look and like I said I I'm not saying that oh cheerleaders can't go with weird kids whatever but here was this girl who was popular and had every guy in the school asking her out and here was the furry kid who wore a fursuit fursuit to school saying yeah man it's gonna be easy we're gonna go to prom together uh it just didn't make sense everybody at my table is kind of looking at each other and is like yeah sure okay man like whatever works and then the furry kid starts telling us about how he's gonna do some research to try to find the best way to ask her to prom which i mean maybe if you don't know someone well enough that you feel like you have to research how they'd want to be asked to prom then Maybe you shouldn't ask him to prom, but this guy was convinced that if he just spent a couple days watching Shalissa, he could find the perfect way to ask her to prom and woo her and sweep her off her feet, and they were going to go on to have little furry babies one day. I, I don't really know what the master plan was, but do furries have kids or litters? Like, what, what do they call them? Are they, are they forced to have twins so that way they could say they had a litter of kids? I don't really know what furries are up to, but regardless, the kid was convinced that they were going to have this life together after they magically went to prom together, and I think they were going to slow dance and hold hands, and magically that was going to fix absolutely everything wrong with this guy's life. So we're like, oh yeah, for sure, dude. You should do some research and try to 
figure out how you're gonna ask this girl to prom ha ah, like yeah go you dude you know not really thinking that it's possible to do much research on how somebody wants to be asked to prom like do you just google their name and prom afterwards and try to figure it out so regardless i'm kind of like yeah something tells me that this is not gonna go very well like i have a very very strong feeling that this is not gonna end how he thinks it's going to but whatever, he doesn't come to school the next day, and then it's the weekend, so I don't see this kid for about three days. And when he walks back in and sits at our table, he starts talking about the girl he's asking to prom, and uh, immediately shows me that he spent this weekend basically being a creepier version of every bad guy from Criminal Minds ever, alright? He starts talking about how he knows where she lives now, and he knows what her parents do for a living, so he might try to incorporate that into asking her to prom. And uh, I want to give all you guys tips right now, because I know a lot of guys in like high school, middle school watch my videos videos do not incorporate where a girl's parents work into how you're gonna ask her to prom or ask her to do anything all right the last thing a girl wants to think about before you ask her on her date is how her dad does customer acquisitions for Microsoft all right like no one wants to think about what their parents do for a living when they're sitting there wondering if this date is gonna be good like uh you know I wasn't very attracted to you I thought you were a strange furry and then you mentioned my mom's job, and I just knew that you were going to be for the one for me. Like, that conversation is never going to go down how you want it to go down. So, a very clear reminder to all of you, don't ask girls to be your girlfriend or to go on a date with you using their parents' job. It's never going to work. But somehow, some way, this guy had figured out where her parents worked, figured out what she likes and doesn't like in a guy. He said he went through all of her tweets and all of her like tweets to try to compile a list of what she found attractive in a guy and came to a conclusion of 10 things and then basically proceeds to explain that he needs to transform himself into the Fonz because she likes bad boys, which he considered just wearing a leather jacket, and then was going to magically woo his way into his heart in one day. Which, uh, you know, you kind of have a reputation as the furry kid, bro, so I don't really know how well you're going to ditch that in 24 hours. Like, you're just going to walk up to her and she's going to go, Oh my god, when you wore a fursuit to school, I, I thought you were strange, but... Now that you're wearing a leather jacket, you're basically Brad Pitt. Will you please marry me? Like, please, please find it in your heart to be kind enough to take me to prom. It would be my honor, sir. It would be my honor. So we all tell them one time that it's probably not a good idea because it comes off as creepy. And the one girl who sits at our table goes, honestly, if she doesn't know you and you've never talked to her before, I think coming at her and telling her what she expects out of his dream guy is a really bad idea. But of course, he laughs us off and says that we wouldn't understand because we're simpletons whose brains can't handle the complexities of love. Yes, please tell me how I'm an idiot as you walk around school in your fursuit. I'm sure you are showing everyone just how sophisticated and big brain you actually are. Because if you ever doubted for a second that this guy wasn't as smart as you, then you just have to take a second and remember that <laughs> he is wearing a fursuit and you're not. So realistically, you're the peasant, all right? Like, that that's what's really important here. So whatever, he, he kind of is like, yeah, you guys are stupid, I'm going to ask her. And we're like, all right, man, well, if we can't stop you, then I guess we can't stop you because none of us are really friends with this kid, all right? Like, we just sat at the same table. We knew he was weird, but we weren't mean because being mean just isn't really worth it. But... You know, you gotta you got think a little bit. Are you gonna stop the random kid from embarrassing himself, or are you gonna sit back and watch the random kid embarrass himself? You're probably just gonna sit back and watch. So the next day, Furry Man comes in wearing a leather jacket and sunglasses inside with his hair slicked back and goes, Today's the day, and shows me a poster that he has written out that says, Shalissa, prom? And he's like, I'm gonna ask her when she comes into class. And we're like... All right, man, I'm sure this is going to go well. This is going to be fantastic. At the very least, I could say it was going to be entertaining because regardless of how this ends, I, I will be either not shocked and entertained or absolutely flabbergasted as Shalissa goes to prom with a furry. Do his, what, does he wear his tuxedo or his fursuit? You know, I don't, I don't really know whichever one he's going to go for. So regardless, we're just kind of sitting here waiting for this magic to unfurl. And she walks in and he unveils the, the poster and it basically says... Hey, Shalissa, go to prom with me. Let's, let's promy wami ooh wooey wooey hee hee furry talk wow wow. Like, it basically says go to prom with me. And she kind of looks at him and goes, oh, oh, I don't, I don't really know you. What's your name again? And he's like, you don't have to know my name to go to prom with me. I'll let my dancing do the talking, which you might think sounds super romantic, but that just sounds a little weird, bro. So he says this and she's like, you know, you're super sweet, but... I actually already have a date to prom, so I'm really sorry. I wish I could go with you, but 
I, I already have a date. There's nothing I can do about it. And he's like, oh, but is your date in alpha? Is your date in alpha? And she's like, I don't really know what you mean. Because most teenage girls aren't familiar with the term alpha when it refers to you and your furry friends role-playing in the park, okay? So she's kind of like, uh, I don't really know what that means, but... You know, he, he we're, 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 we're already going. I already have a date. I'm so sorry, but I can't bail on my date. That wouldn't be fair to him. And this guy starts talking about how he's going to fight her date because it's not fair that pretty girls always go to dances with dates instead of giving guys like him a chance. So now we've gone from furries to r slash nice guys sitting out here just doing his absolute best to make himself the least attractive person to ever exist. Like, you want to know how to make sure that you're going to get it rejected? You get rejected and you don't accept it and you just keep telling the girl no she has to go with you and you don't care if she already has a date because it's her obligation to date you for some reason i don't really know i wasn't following too well but that's what this guy is saying so she said no and he won't stop freaking out to the point where our teacher comes in and he's still yelling at her that she has to go out with him so the teacher gets involved and starts asking what's going on and basically tells the kid that he has two options he can either leave the class or leave her alone because she won't tolerate this guy being a weirdo over the fact that this girl rejected him so he does what any sensible normal person would do and decides to leave the classroom because he refuses to be disrespected as if this girl had any obligation to go out with him in the first place like call me crazy but a girl doesn't have to date you regardless of how badly you want them to like you're just a creeper man uh, after that he basically went back to his weird furry self but now had a weird weird jealousy thing of Shalissa and basically said that she she just didn't want to date him because he was a furry which yeah that was it it's not like you're unappealing as a person <laughs> So just to give you guys a picture of these kids, they were the type of kids that would hang out before school across the street smoking cigarettes, wearing like black trench coats, and just being super edgy, you know? Life is nothing but a meaningless pit of despair. Hits a cigarette, like, alright Rebecca, your dad manages a hedge fund, alright? You might want to chillax a little bit, he might take away your black Mercedes. But life is just really so hard, I'm sure, you know? You just needing to pretend that you drink blood is super edgy. And they would just say stuff like during classes and whatnot that was so funny. Uh, I was in honors English and I had a few vampires kids in my class and it was a pretty sizable group it was like 10 or 15 kids so I had two of them in my class and we had an assignment where we had to write poetry and of course you know I, I was writing joke poetry like I've just always liked to make jokes it's always what I've done so I wrote a joke about being a wizard and like casting spells to turn people into pigs I don't know it was a dumb poem right and it was just something silly and then right after me you know Rebecca gets up of course you couldn't call her Rebecca her vampire name was like some Transylvanian shit like Zacharath or whatever I don't really pay attention it was some dumb name and she starts reading this poem about how darkness is black and so is my soul. I have nothing to love but the soul of the enemies that I have made. Just some real edgy grade A shit. And the best part is Rebecca and I were neighbors and um, in her backyard was a pool. And when we were kids, we would go swimming and she would be like in bright colors all the time and just super happy and super energetic and a ton of fun. She joins this vampire game and saw like all of a sudden, Rebecca really switches up. Instead of being, you know, a chill, normal girl wearing bright colors, she wants to drink blood in the back of the, I don't know, a black SUV surrounded by a bunch of members of like people painted in zombie paint. It was just weird. Rebecca was funny and her poem was about how hard of a life she has. I'm like, Rebecca, I, I know your family, okay? Your parents love you. Like, what do you mean? Oh, my life's a pit of despair. No, it's not. The pit of despair is going to Disneyland with my family every year. Oh, my life's just so difficult. So they were just posers. It wasn't like kids who actually had a hard life. They would just pretend like, you know, they've just really experienced it. It's just been a really hard life for them, you know? Another really funny story that me and my friend were thinking of, okay? So th this is a real story, by the way. So in order to get lunch we had like this long line and you get to the front and it was just like this desk where you would like order your lunch and you would take it and go back and of course you know these edgy vampire kids were always the people that you wanted to stand behind the least but one day me and my friends are standing behind them and they get to the front and they were like do you have any vegan options and the lunch lady's like no and they're like wow so you just hate animals you know like whatever uh, here's what's funny. If you guys are vampires, you're drinking animal blood. You think that's vegan? You think they just drain the blood? Like, hey, Mr. Pig, can I borrow an ounce of blood so I can drink it later? No, that's not how vampires work. Second of all, this lunch lady is serving you lunch. Do you think she really has time to hear about your vampiric ass complaining that there's no vegan options on the lunch menu? But regardless, they start trying to argue with the lunch lady about why there should be vegan menus. Like, yes, I'm sure the school district is really gonna take the lunch lady's concerns super seriously. She's gonna pull up to the PTA meeting like, there was some guys that were sitting there, you know, and there was these vampire kids that were like, you should pick vegan. And I really think that we should get vegan options on the menu. 
And of course, when the lunch lady tries to explain to them that she doesn't have control over the menu, they start complaining about how, like, he, the lunch lady, should be doing more to help the students. Like, these kids were so cringy. Who complains to a lunch lady that there's no vegan options and is like, you're not doing enough to help the student body? It's not her job to help the student body, dumbass. And these vampire kids, on top of just annoying lunch ladies and making up poems about how hard their life is when it's not hard at all, would have, like, these meetings behind the school, you know, or across the street where they could smoke cigarettes, where they would just say weird shit. And people would, you know, come to school and just talk about what they would hear as they were passing by. And they would, like, talk about, like, if you had to drink one person in the school's blood, who would it be? Who has that conversation? conversation who's just sitting there looking at a bunch of kids going to high school and is like ah oh, i bet you her blood tastes real good like do you understand how awkward and how weird you have to be to think about that oh man i personally wouldn't like her blood it seems a little clunky as for that guy his blood looks like it runs all the way to the hills man i bet you he would be absolutely delicious i have no doubt and you couldn't argue with these vampire kids because they were like a wolf pack all right if you messed with one you messed with all of them i remember one time there was this kid who fought one of the members of the vampires and i'm not even kidding you like he swung on the kid in the trench coat by the time everyone turned around it was like a bunch of bats had congregated around this kid it was just black coats everywhere they're all swinging on the kid fighting him and if you tried to argue with them they would just like mock you they really thought it was a really good arguing technique if you were like why do you think you're a vampire why do you want to drink blood like why do you want to do this they'd be like no bro like we're a pack and they would just mock you like oh why do you think you should drink blood it's a valid question jeremy all right your mom's a chef why do you feel the need to drink pig blood when you could have a fresh cookie i don't understand i don't get that option i would pick the cookie every single time but you're a weirdo you do weird things i guess i don't know it's just something so cringy about a bunch of rich white kids pretending they're vampires and like they have a hard life there's just something so awkward about it and like i said you know they would write these poems they would do all these things and like for some reason our english teachers would feed into it and be like wow these kids are really just different in expressing themselves no no miss smith the kid pretending to be a vampire isn't expressing himself he's weird and you telling him that he's unique and cool for it isn't gonna help him out like the teachers would encourage it and you know i'm just gonna put this in perspective we had a problem in our school we couldn't wear the number 63 on any sports jersey because we had this joke me and my friends that we were you know 6-3 gang that's another story time right but regardless they would like be like oh you're a gang you can't wear that jersey number but these kids smoking and drinking blood and talking about which students blood they want to drink were perfectly cool that was allowed no issues there perfectly fine to just be hanging out chilling drinking people's blood all day but if you wore too many jersey numbers who no guys that's highly inappropriate you cannot do that but the ultimate story of these vampire kids, the one that just really made me giggle like there was no tomorrow, is going to be the last story of the video. So these kids wouldn't use normal social medias. Like when I was in high school, Twitter and Instagram was cool. But for some reason, these kids were just like, nah, that's too mainstream. We're still going to use Facebook. Whatever, bro. Mark Zuckerberg read all your weird wolf shit. Or vampires, wolf, whatever. Vampires. Even then, so whatever, we get into this, and they had this Facebook group where they would talk about stuff. And of course, everyone would wonder what's going on in the Facebook group. There was tons of rumors that they were, like, planning to drink people's blood, or, like, that was where they would plan weird, I don't know, vampire stuff, whatever. So, of course, we make this fake Facebook profile and just, for months, are constantly trying to get into this group. And then finally, one day, my friend gets his fake account into the group. And I'm not kidding you, reading these messages was like getting on the inside of the most emo, edgy kids of all time. These kids would write paragraphs on paragraphs every day about how much they hated their parents and how life was so hard. And no joke, as I said at the start of the story, a lot of these kids were driving like brand new black Mercedes or parents would take them to Disneyland every year. Just the type of stuff that you were like, your life's not hard. It's not hard to be a spoiled rich girl, right? So what my friend is, he screenshotted every single one of these posts of them just complaining about their parents, how much they hated them, how their mom was a bitch, all this stuff that they would say about their parents and like their parents loved them. That's all their parents had ever done. Takes the screenshots and then sends it to the kids' parents, of course, right? And it's the funniest thing because all of a sudden these kids start showing up to school not longer in black trench coats, no longer in any of this. Come to find out, they didn't know who leaked them from the Facebook group, right? So we're reading the posts, and I guess when they got posted, the parents were like, if you want us to keep paying your car insurance, if you want us to keep doing all this stuff for you, then you have to be normal, like no more vampire shit. Meaning that these kids were such posers that the first time that their parents were like, hey, no more vampire drinking blood stuff, they were like, okay, dad, I'm sorry, please don't, please don't take away my car, I'm sorry, dad. And I mean, if you're that much of a poser that you're willing to throw away what you supposedly believe in, that you're a vampire or whatever, in 30 seconds when dad's going to take away your Mercedes, you're just such a fake person. 
And it's just so funny that they would post paragraphs and paragraphs complaining about how easy their life was. Like, it's so hard to be me, guys. Me and my black Mercedes just really have a hard time getting along. I'm basically Edward Cullen from Twilight with worse hair. All right, guys, what's going on? So I'm going to keep it a buck here. High school is a pretty weird time, okay? Like, I, I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, high school is going to be awesome. And, you know, maybe it will be. Maybe it'll be the greatest four years of your life. But I'm going to let you know personally, high school is bizarre. Don't get me wrong. You guys can enjoy it. You just got to understand that none of it matters and you shouldn't take it very seriously. But uh, there was one particular kid in my high school that took things a little too seriously all the time and it just got to the point where it was annoying and cringy and for the purpose of this video I'm gonna name him Tommy and you know Tommy was a pretty okay kid I guess it's not like I hated him but Tommy just had this problem where he couldn't mind his own business but he also was a goody two-shoes that had to snitch if he ever found anything out and the reason that combination is so annoying is because like look if you are involved in doing something bad or beg people to find out what they're doing and then snitch you're just Randall from from recess like you're just the worst and that's what this kid was bro I'm gonna be honest I said he was pretty cool he wasn't he he was just straight up lame all the time my first experience really with this kid was like on one of the first couple days of school I was talking to one of my friends not him I was not talking to this Tommy kid I was talking to one of my friends and I think I said something like F that but I didn't say F like I said the actual word I'm not gonna say it on YouTube because I like to get paid but uh, you know in person I don't really care so I just said F that and, you know, he learned, leaned over to me from another table, a table away and said, um, please watch your language. Like, that was the type of kid we were dealing with. And listen, if you don't want to swear, that's none of my business. I don't care. But, like, don't lean over from another table when I'm not talking for you and tell me what to say. So I looked at him that first time. He told me to knock it off. And I was like, I'm not going to do what you tell me to do. So how about you mind your business? Which, yeah, a little strong, but is fair. And he, like, gave me this look and rolled his eyes as if, like, I was dumb, you know? And he said you do realize that swearing is the sign of someone being uneducated yeah that's right tommy i'm a moron bro i said the f word and my iq points literally dropped 80 percent and uh if the swearing does make your iq lower then i'm already like brain dead so there's no reason for me to stop swearing now but he was just like snitchy and judgmental and weird but the real cringe comes in from the fact that this kid would do stuff like that and then go to the teachers and be like, I'm not welcome in the lunchroom. The other children are bullying me. And I'm going to be honest, nobody bullied him, bro. He would just like be a little twat and then people would like insult him back. I'll never forget one time he went to this teacher crying about how he was getting bullied because somebody told him to go back to like his home or something if he wanted a butler because they weren't going to do it for him. And that made him feel excluded. But the situation that transpired before that, the one that he was crying and telling the teacher, Teacher about all happened because he told somebody that because their parents laid m made less money than his that they had to clean up his trash at lunch and listen man if you ever look at me and say my parents make more money than your parents you have to clean up my trash yeah, I'm probably telling you to go back home if you want a butler. I'm probably saying some meaner things too, but regardless, he would like go to the teachers and cry about that and all the teachers would feel bad for him because he had no friends, but it wasn't like he had no friends because people were mean to him. He had no friends because he just wasn't someone that you ever wanted to be friends with, dude. Ah, uh, yes, if we're going to be friends, then you have to know that if your parents are poorer than mine, then you simply must clean up my trash. Like, who wants to be friends with that? No wonder he wasn't welcome at anybody's lunch table. And, and it would get even worse than that he would snitch on literally everything like I already told you that but an example of something like so ridiculous that he snitched on one time in PE I remember we were playing like basketball or something and somebody like dunked right you know we we were on a different size hoop we could lower the hoops we had this black top and basically the way it worked is like at this end towards the school there were normal size hoops and as it went down the hoops got a little bit smaller and at the end was like eight feet tall hoops well, the rule was we like if we dunked, we weren't allowed to hang on to it. Well, somebody dunked and literally hung on for maybe three seconds. And this Tommy kid went to the PE coach and told him that we were breaking the rules, hanging on the baskets and how we were going to break them and how we were repeatedly breaking the rules. Keep in mind, we only broke them once. And the coach got all pissed and was yelling at us. And the next day, that eight foot hoop had been raised to like a normal sized one. And it was like a fun thing in the school, okay? Believe it or not, not many 
people in high school can throw dunks on a regulation size basketball hoop. So he got the small hoop removed because he lied about us breaking the rules on it. And it's just like, dude, who cares if people are hanging on the hoop? You just didn't have to snitch. It was so unnecessary. And that's why he would get picked on. And then, like, after that, nobody wanted anything to do with him even more just because it was like, come on, you got the fun part of PE taken away. I'm going to take a quick second and just ask you guys to press the like button and comment something down below. It helps the channel do better, and I'd appreciate it. And if you're new, why not subscribe and hit that notification button? I post videos like this every day, and you don't want to miss them. All right, sorry for being annoying back to the video and the kid like turned it into how the whole school had it out to get him because he was just worried about our safety like this kid was omega cringe but the cringiest thing that I think I had ever seen him do ladies and gentlemen takes place during this lunch thing where like kids could go up and uh, present something at lunch and like nobody ever did it okay because it was weird to like get up in front of the class and demand that they stop what they're doing at lunch so they can watch what you were doing it was a part of this initiative that our principal was doing to like showcase the skills of the school and show that some of our students have great skills like some corny you know principal stuff to make us believe in ourselves and whatnot and this kid gets up in front of the like whole school, you know, picks up the microphone. Nobody's paying attention. He does the I'll wait thing. Keep in mind, this is a kid. This isn't a teacher. This is a principal. This kid is in the microphone saying I'll wait. So somebody yelled back like, all right, you're going to be waiting for a while just because that was funny. And the kid is like snarling, not having any of it. And after the class or like the not the class, the, the lunchroom, it's not our class. It's everybody. Lunch was mixed. But like. You know, after the lunchroom finally quiets down, this kid starts singing, bro. And it's not good singing. He's, like, singing, like, not she shanties. I'm going to do my best rendition of the style of music that this kid is singing. He's like, oh, sometimes in the field. Like, he's just singing an old song that you would sing, you know, while you're rowing down the Mississippi River to, like, take all your corn to market. It's just the weirdest thing. So everybody starts booing him. And when we start booing him, dude, the teachers come up and are, like, yelling at us that we have to support our other students no matter how weird their talents are. And let's be honest, uh, the word talent is a little bit excessive considering this kid's singing skills. But personally, if I hopped up in front of the entire school and started singing she shanties and nobody liked it and started booing, I would stop. But this kid, you know, like, is like, I'm going to persevere and push through it and kept singing songs for the rest of lunch while everybody was booing him, bro. The entire cafeteria is like, knock it off. We don't want to hear your singing. But, you know, all the teachers are clapping every time he finishes a song and calling him cultured. And I hate the idea that these kids have, like, just because they like something that not everyone else likes, that they're cultured. You want to know why people don't listen to she shanties anymore? Because we invented better instruments, all right? Back in the day, when you had scurvy, you were singing whatever you wanted. But the reason that stuff went out of style is because it's way better to listen to Post Malone than it is to, ye old man on the boat, say ho! Like, dude, nobody wants to listen to that but he would tell everyone how much smarter he is for his she shanties you know so he's singing them they're awful the teachers are hyping them up which i hate when teachers hype up kids who just don't deserve the hype dude listen i, I know you want to be nice but you know that this kid is garbage at singing too we don't have to pretend <laughs> I feel like working in an ice cream store is supposed to be one of those jobs that's like relatively chill, you know? There shouldn't be a whole bunch of pressure involved in scooping ice cream and putting it in a cone, but uh, this person sent me in the story and basically said that for whatever reason, people become unhinged at ice cream parlors all the time, like... Almost on a daily basis, yes, somebody freaks out, but this story in particular is one of his favorites from his time working at an ice cream parlor. But regardless, one day this guy has just been scooping ice cream for a while. You know, he's got those ginormous rip biceps that come with curling out some Rocky Road ice cream after a long day. And for the most part, he says that during the pandemic, people have been, like, relatively understanding of the fact that, you know, he's not really in charge of store policy, isn't there isn't really much he can do about the fact that, like, you have to wear a mask or you know he has to sanitize everything between people so it takes a little bit longer like all that stuff most
most people are pretty understanding. But one day, it's like near the beginning of his shift, and some girl is, or woman, I guess I should say, before anyone in the comments is like, wow, way to call a grown woman a girl disrespectful much, and like, yeah, I ain't gonna respect a Karen, bro. Like, uh-uh, that's not about it. But regardless, some woman comes in and immediately is like verbally impatient at the fact that there's a line and it's taking a long time. Keep in mind, there's just extra stuff that he has to do because of COVID, and it's not his fault. Like, Believe it or not, the kid who's working behind the ice cream store the thing does not want to make you wait forever. Trust me, he wants you gone too. But anyways, like maybe a minute into waiting, she starts being like, Ugh, can you go any faster? Do they even train you on how to scoop ice cream? You're taking forever. And just overall starts like kind of going at this poor dude who's just trying to scoop ice cream and do his thing, you know? Do his job, get everybody out there as fast as humanly possible. And she starts, like, verbally complaining about how annoying it is that he's taking forever. And the other people in the store kind of look at her and give her a dirty look. So she quiets down, like, a little bit, you know? So, whatever. She waits in line for maybe the ten minutes it takes for the three people in front of her to go. Just because the, it just takes a little bit longer. Whatever. But if you go into an ice cream store, you kind of got to just be patient. If you want Rocky Road that badly that quick, you will be slammed whale. Just go to the frozen section of Walmart and pick it off the frozen section. I don't know if she was in a land whale or not. That was just, I don't know. I felt like saying it, so I said it. Regardless, you know, she comes into an ice cream store and just, like, is being verbally impatient, you know, kind of yelling at the poor kid, like, hurry up and whatnot. So everybody else is now out of the store after they get their ice cream, and they're only allowed to have, like, certain amounts of people in the store, and she was with the last group of people who came in. You you guys get, I don't, I don't know, I don't work in, like, a normal job right now, but I'm assuming it's a giant pain in the butt. Regardless, she gets to the front and she starts being like, you know, I think it's pretty ridiculous how long you made me wait. And he's trying to explain to her, you know, I don't want to make you wait, but regardless, my job has certain things that I have to do. I have to take everybody's temperature. I have to clean blah, blah, blah between everything. I, I have to. It's just what I have to do. And she starts telling him that, you know, that stupid virus isn't real anyways. And like, look, regardless of how you feel about it, it's definitely real. Like, that's what I don't understand about some people, you know? Like, you can say what you want about masks or whatever. I think you should wear a mask. But, like, what do you mean the virus isn't real? It's definitely real. Like, what, you think they just made up the virus itself and it doesn't exist? So she starts lecturing this poor kid about how it's not real and he's a sheep for listening to the media and making people wear masks. And he's like, yeah okay, my boss told me to do it, and he kind of signs my paycheck, so I kind of got to do what I got to do. Like, that's what he tells her, essentially, is, look, I'm just a teenage kid scooping ice cream, and my boss told me to do it, so I'm just going to do it. And then this lady starts going off on him about how he's like a spineless coward for being willing to change his opinion for money and how money isn't worth sacrificing the freedom of others, and he's violating people's freedoms by following these rules, like... Going off on this kid who's literally like, nah, I just don't really care. My, my boss told me to do it, so I'm just going to do it. And you know what? I agree that you shouldn't do everything for money. Like, there are certain things you shouldn't do for money. But no, if my boss tells me to tell people to wear a mask, I feel like I'm willing to do that for money. Like, that's a perfectly okay thing to do at your job. So he's just kind of sitting there like, oh, okay, I guess I'm a spineless coward. I, I don't know what you want me to do, lady. I'm just trying to scoop ice cream. And so he gives her the ice cream, and she's like, uh, well, what is this? And he's like, it's your ice cream. And she's like, you think I'm going to take ice cream from you now? Like, I'm not paying for this. And he's like, all right, well, I already scooped it. So, and he like goes to take the ice cream back. And she's like, well, if, if you're just going to take it back, then I'll take it. He's like, no, like you got to pay for it. And so she does what she thinks is a power move. And I can't believe this as I'm reading this in the DMs, dude. She takes the ice cream and like grabs it with her hand. Like the raw ice cream, the scoop of ice cream is now being crushed in these ladies' hand. And she's like squeezing it. So she's just holding a fistful of ice cream and it's melting and it's getting all over her. Like it's making her hand sticky. And she takes it out of, like, the cone or the cup, I don't know what he put it in, and slams it on, like, the top of the glass thing and is like, how about that? And, like, lets her hands go and storms out of the door. And he's like, uh, okay, how about what? Like, you just grabbed ice cream with your hand, covered your hand in ice cream and in sticky, and then left without washing your hand, and now you're gonna have to drive home with a sticky hand. So, yeah, you really got me. And even then, dude, like, wh what is that supposed to teach him? Like, you really think that this kid is going to sit there staring at that melting scoop of ice cream, watching it slowly dribble down the counter and be like, 
Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. I used to believe in the coronavirus, and then a lady grabbed ice cream, and now I'm not sure if it's real anymore, so I will never wear a mask. Like, what? what is smashing ice cream on the counter and making this kid clean it really going to teach him about being a man? But regardless, I guess the Karen just thought that somehow making him clean up the ice cream at his ice cream job was really traumatizing, even though it's not like he cleans up ice cream all the time, and... Keep in mind, he literally has to wipe down everything every time he serves ice cream anyways. So he literally was gonna have to clean it when the next person came in anyways. It was the most useless, like, gotcha moment ever. And all she did was make herself look like an idiot who doesn't understand that grabbing ice cream is not a power move. Nobody is intimidated by you just slapping your mitts on some ice-cold dairy. Imagine the kid just immediately has a seizure from the amount of fear coursing through his veins as Karen politely, like, slams this frozen dairy onto the counter. Oh, everyone watch out, dude. Karen learned how to use her hands the way hands are used. Ah. Ah. I also love the fact that she stormed out after without washing her hands. Like, she definitely got in the car and grabbed the steering wheel and was like, Ah, oh, shit. My hands are really sticky. I should have thought this through. Like... I'm gonna be honest, driving with sticky hands is the worst. Having sticky hands in general is the worst. It just makes you feel like an unevolved creature, dude. And this lady really just drove home with some nasty ice cream hands. Her steering wheel was probably all sticky and covered in that, like, the residue from ice cream after, oh, oh man, yeah, that's a fat L. Way to go, Karen. You definitely taught this kid a lesson.